welcome back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a baby sea turtle just hatching out of its egg. Um, as always, I'm using a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. I'm drawing straight into Photoshop, so let's get arting. All right, so here is the sea turtle in the egg, um, crawling out of the egg. Um, so we're gonna have some like a whitish, moderately tannish. I make it a little bit more color and then a kind of a darker bluish kind of color I'm just darkening that up okay so I'm gonna get started with like the the tan which is kind of in between everything right so that's you know all of this in here and all through here all through the blue I guess I could just follow the edge so I'm actually doing this in light pin pressure not putting a ton of pressure here. Very light. But I am also, it's a small space, so I am getting a little bit, um, uh, that's crooked. Let's do a little bit, but we'll say that turns yellow pretty quick, yellow tan, whatever. Something. So it's going to be underneath. Um, all of this under the chin, all of this with the blue kind of on top, there's going to be some tan throughout the shell. So I'm going to get all of this in, all of the tan, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have that tan in, I'm going to do the blue. So just like I did with the tan, um, and actually what I started doing after partway through was um, to go ahead and fill it in fully in shadow, but that's still meaning, you know, I'm, I'm not putting full pin pressure, right? I'm still backing off that pin pressure. Um, as I draw it in. So I'm going to do the same thing with the blue. Um, and I'll be right back.
So I'm gonna get the egg, which um, obviously is kind of an off-white, which makes perfect sense in this particular case too, because the egg be sitting in sand would not be white. Um, so just like everything else I've done so far, um, just gonna do this in shadow first which is just that light pin pressure, and then add highlighting from there. Just following the contour of the egg, although, you know, my tablet, my Wacom tablet, ever since I had to get a new one, it doesn't, it's one side of the pin, no matter how many times I change the stylus to a, to a new nib, one side never works, and I always have to spin it. It's kind of annoying. See here. It's not actually drawing. If I put a ton of pin pressure, it will. Whereas this is normal pin pressure. This is full pin pressure with it not working. Ugh, oh, it's just irritating. I don't know what to do about it. But it's the last few drawings have been even more difficult than usual. Because it just spins on its own, the nib. And it only happens in certain spots on the tablet. All right, I've replaced the nib tip again. So hopefully it'll be a little smoother. They're not even, they used to have these big nib tips that were really nice and they'd last a while and then they made them really short so that you'd have to buy more. And now I guess they make it so that um, they stop working when they're not even like fully depleted. They're only like partially depleted and they'll get, you know, a couple months worth of use out of them and you have to replace them just kind of feels like a cash grab. Despite that, I love Wacom, but gosh, it's just kind of annoying. Right, so, okay, drawing the egg. As you can tell, I'm distracted because I am in fact drawing an egg. Um, right, it's just drawing all those, all those like cracks in, and then once I get all of that in, making sure that the outside edge is somewhat reasonable. Um, now when it, you know, when they're hatching, there's all these, these, you know, cracks. <laughs> um, but the, the egg will smash or distort or, or whatever else. So it doesn't have to be fully round, especially because I have the turtle coming out on the side here. So there's some amount of smashing of the egg that would have had to have happened for the turtle to get to this point. Otherwise, he'd be up in the air. You look at, like, photos of turtles hatching, they're all like up in the air, right? Um, but that's not how I wanted to draw it, so I was reimagined it with instead a cracked egg lying sideways. And then just, you know, like an egg would have if it had been busted open, jagged areas where it doesn't, it doesn't break seamlessly, you know. All of that stuff. So this is still light pin pressure. So, um, right, it's just this, right, going around the edge of the egg. So I'm going to get this done, this whole outer edge, and I will be right back. I'm going to go along the edge and fill in any weird spots that are gapped. Any stray lines coming up, because an egg wouldn't have you know, fur, so there wouldn't be any stray lines like that. They all kind of run into each other. Yeah, okay. So, that's the outer egg. I am going to do another layer. Um, gonna have, so I'm going to say this now because it'll kind of dictate what's happening inside this egg. I'm going to have the light source coming from above and to the left. I'm going to have a little bit of light over here in the egg as it gets deeper and deeper into the chasm of the egg. Have that fade off. Um, but maybe there'd be some light coming through, in which case there might be some over here. I don't know, I can change that if I need to. Alright, well, we'll see. Okay, so. All right, light source coming from above and to the left, so if we go ahead and get started on this egg, I did just do this in a different layer, right? Yeah. 
and that's going to be all up in here. Right, so really like brightening that up. Although I had a crack there, I just colored over, that's fine. I can just pretend that was a jagged spot instead. Right, so, and then it would be coming over to a point. And certainly the edges would still be catching the light, even as it comes over and the rest might not be. These would be just a little bit for that kind of tan color. Right, kind of same thing. You know, you're going to have full pin pressure filling in, light source above and to the left. Hopefully I said left when I did the eye because that's certainly what I meant. Some amount of shadowing under the eye, but not a lot because their eyes do bulge, right? So that would be some, certainly would have some over here. And then bringing it down and as you bring it down, slowly going into shadow underneath. A little bit of shadowing again by the eye, but then you have again, this right through here, right through here, all that highlight. Nose would be angling a slightly different way, so you do start, you know, turning into shadow over here. Um, and then down here, certainly would have highlight down his mouth. Now this is kind of rounding under, and I didn't quite portray that exactly right, but. And then underneath, you know, you have kind of like a scale underneath going into some shadow but there would also still be a little highlighting right near the top as the mouth um, rounds back out and then you have another scale and then one that's more in shadow there's not as much with the tan right but still a little just um, not as much as it will be of the blue, so this will be pretty quick. Right, all these gaps in between the shell. Ooh. If it were a big dip, you know, you, you would be offering some manner of um, shadowing there. Not a, a huge dip in between. Obviously, the shell rounds over, um, so that changes things too. But then considering where your light source is, Now, we have some of this it is rounding down in a way, so doing it at the top, but not at the bottom. Over here, not as much, but making sure that it at least makes some sense. With it coming from above and to the left, you might have some over here as well. Is this um, thin flipper? Thing. coming out. Still not going full on it because it is still rounding under. Now it starts rounding away. See this side is turned away so you wouldn't get it as much. Okay. Now for the blue. All right, you have the nose. It goes into shadow where the nostril is but otherwise this is highlight. This doesn't have to stay confined. It's kind of a looser line. And then we'll bring that over, lowering my pin pressure by a lot, but still giving it a little love. Oh, that was a lot of love. Too much love. Right, so it's just a matter of, of finishing this out. Um, making sure all the colors run together, right? So not leaving like a black gap here. Um, so as I fill in the rest of this, because I'm going to go
go ahead and, and speed up the video, but as I fill in the rest of this, right, it's gonna be through the head here on this side and this side and then the top of this eye and maybe the bottom just because I like to add some light there, but realistically because of the way their faces are turned, there wouldn't be. So I might play that by ear. Definitely gonna see how it looks. The fins, the top of both of them, Oh, that scared me. Uh, the fins, the top of both of them, uh, the shell up to a point before it starts going into shadow. Some of this body here is going into the shell, so not as much of that, but I'm gonna play that by ear depending on how the, you know, exactly where I cut it for the, I don't know, fins, flippers, whatever you wanna call them. Um, so I'm gonna get this done and I will be right back. So, I'm just gonna fix right here by this nostril. And then give a little bit more breathing room there. Maybe two. One right there. Yeah, two. I was debating on if I was gonna add just a light flare to the eye, which would be easy. Or if I should also add um, a like iris pupil. They have brown eyes. Kind of dark brown. I guess we'll do. See, so come straight down and then loop it versus over here where it's rounded out because of the angle. I think that's right. And then fill in the edge, leaving the top. Oh, not doing what I just did. Um, leaving the top black for the eye to cast the shadow. I feel like that'll give them more personality instead of just. Adding a light flare. Ooh, words, yeah. Right, so that angle on this one over here is just different because of where it is. Okay. I do think it works. Now, theory, this side would be um, in shadow. Probably gonna add a little bit of highlighting to it. Um, this side would be in highlight, so we are gonna do that. Better than what I just did, right? So you. Put a bright light against the pupil um, on the opposite side of the light source because pupils are like recesses going into your head, right? So the light will catch that edge and then on the side of the light source, now their heads are turned sideways, but it'll still work. On the side of the light source, that's where you would fill it in and underneath. Typically, it does depend on your light source. Um, I'm not going too hard or heavy here. She's still kind of being light and loose. But I'm gonna make sure this is a little cleaner. Um, now over here, I'm not gonna do much. Add a little bit of coloration, but not a ton. Okay. If I don't like it, I can always change it. Now for a light flare. Where's the fact of light? An actual light flare. That's just a, a spot of like bright white on the eye. On an animal like this, you wouldn't probably have anything over here, but I am gonna do a little bit of one. Just something barely there. 
maybe a little bit more. Close up looks the best. I actually think that works there. Yeah, okay. Um, now I am going to add some highlight here. And this is only where like the light would really be extreme. Right, so I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. But like, you know, the nose on the head, where I think he'd have a little bit extra over the eye. Under the eye. So it's kind of um, choosing where I think the highlight would be really hitting the most, right? I'm not covering everything that's in highlight, but like along the fin, like we're coming from above into the left, so you might have some on some of these coming down on the more um, left side. This I always kind of, when I do this, I'm definitely just sort of winging it. Because it's always so much of art and so much of what makes a composition look good is how you're treating the light source. You know, you could sketch anything, um, but if your shadows and highlights are a little off, we'll notice that more. You know, you could sketch something in fantasy or, or whatever else, but, and that's fine. Um, in fact, I like drawing that way because it's easier to sketch. Um, as long as your shadows and highlights are like on point and then, you know, you're golden. If it's not, we'll notice, you know, people notice that. And so I'm always thinking about my light source when I'm doing something. It's, it's everything I do is thinking about how that light source would be interacting with the subject. And then I'm typically not putting full pin pressure here. I am varying it. It's not the end of the world if I do. Um, and so then on the fin on the right, you know, that light source is going to be hitting more on this side. Again, on the on that left or left lefter, that left side of the fin. It's just to give it like a little extra burst of depth. That's what this is doing. I know it's white on top, but because of how the orange is acting, right, warm colors push forward, and while my whites are typically warm in nature, um, a warm color adding this sort of pop is still useful. Because it gives kind of everything that, you have like an orange glow to the highlights. I think that works. Now, sometimes, I add blue to the shadows, but he's already got blue, so I don't know if I'm going to do it. Um, I mean, I could experiment with it, but I don't know that I need to. If I push that into the shadows, we'll see how this does. And we have a baby sea turtle. All right, so that's how you draw a baby sea turtle. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.